I have some evidence for you today. To take all of your assumptions and shove them up your ass. This is an EEG. So everybody who thought that I was fake, well, this proves you don't know what you're fucking talking about. So it says... This is a 21-channel record performed on a 34-year-old with reported history of seizures. Electrodes were placed according to the standards of the 1020 international system. While awake, an alpha rhythm of 9 through 11 hertz and of 10 to 40 microvolts was seen symmetrically over the occipital regions. The symmetric low-amplitude beta rhythms uh, mixed with muscle movement artifacts are presently diffused in the background. More significantly, there are present intermittent high amplitude sharp and slow wave discharges which are accompanied which are intermittently high amplitude sharp and slow wave discharges which are bihemispheric and last variably from half to one second. These are not accompanied by any clinical changes. Multiple such discharges are present during the study. Photic stimulation is unremarkable. It also did not last very long. Later in the study, the patient is drowsy with an increase in slower rhythms. Ongoing e EKG monitor reveals a regular rhythm of 60 beats per minute. Interpretation. Abnormal record because of the occurrence of intermittent sharp and slow wave discharges as described. Correlation. The above described abnormalities are epileptiform. That means I have epilepsy. And would be consistent with a history of generalized seizures. Moving on. Let me see. This is the other neurologist. This is this happens to be the second neurologist I saw. Now we are about to get into the records from the first. This is the first neurologist I saw, and he did not do an EEG. It took me 10 years to get an EEG done. So the first neurologist said, proxismal non-kinesogenic dyskinesia versus conversion disorder. Well, we can tell from this that it's not a conversion disorder. A conversion disorder means that you have a mental health issue that is becoming psychosomatic, and it is coming out as seizures. That is not what's going on if we have a actual EEG that says I have seizures. Furthermore, it is not unusual for people to have, who have seizures to have mental disturbances before and after their seizures including anxiety, feelings of anger, depression, sudden paranoia, the list goes on. So we know from those two things that I'm not well. This was a rheumatology thing that was done when I was 15. Uh... And it says, multiple joint pains. The patient complains of pain in multiple joints. Although no objective arthritis was noted on examination today, there is a skin rash noted on it. Um, there is a skin rash suggested, suggestive of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis might be considered. Although, again, no definite arthritis was noted on examination at this time. Should there be development of any joint swelling, she will return for further evaluation. The patient has many symptoms consistent with fibromyalgia with widespread pain, fatigue, sleep difficulty, and multiple trigger points in a typical fibromyalgia distribution. It is possible 
that fibromyalgia might fibromyalgia might account for all of her symptoms and we will recommend a regular exercise program referral to the fibromyalgia class was discussed and she will consider this trials of other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications were also discussed but she prefers to continue with motrin at this time so this is the issue fibromyalgia has a lot of the same symptoms as other movement disorders such as MS, Parkinson's, etc. Except those things do not usually present at this young of an age. However, this does. But my tics were so rare and so few and far between when I was little that nobody really paid attention to them. And since they mostly occurred after I started taking um, Prozac, uh, they were, it was thought of that it might be the Prozac causing them. And that is a very real thing. That's called Parkinsonism. That is called EPS, extrapyramidal symptoms. Uh, it's basically when the Psych meds you are on give you involuntary movements. This is why I have a lot of trouble with the whole conversion disorder thing. And a lot of the times people just throw that at poor women. And I mean poor women. Um, because the meds that they can put people on for uh, any sort of... And they just automatically throw you on these meds these days. Like you go and say, I'm sad. Like they don't start with, okay, let's get you in for some talk therapy. It's like, no, let's hit you with the Prozac. Even though they knew that you weren't supposed to give Prozac to minors. So, but as I was saying, paroxysmal non-kinesogenic dyskinesia does often start in childhood and it often develops into things like MS and Parkinson's. And there is this. This is the third neurologist I've seen. Now, I got to see him because I fell at work and hurt my knee. I had been having seizures for the days prior to this happening, and I think they were worried about uh, me dinging them for the neurological disorder. And I was like, no, no, it, I fell at work and I hurt my knee. You are not responsible for the neurological disorder. But they sent me to a neurologist. And he, along with everything else about the knee, going, why did you send me somebody for a knee, goes, where is it? She has seizures and tics and needs regular medical care. And later in his thing, um, patient states, she has a long history of seizures and her seizure activity has increased recently since moving to this area. She has been attempting to initiate care through medical insurance with one of two local neurologists. She takes gabapentin for dyskinesia, neurological disorder, tics and seizures. Post-injury, she got her medications from this hospital. She has many, she has had tics and seizures for many years beginning in childhood and 2010. The tics began in childhood, the seizures began in 2010. Uh, And somewhere in here says patient is not receiving disability compensation. Patient states she is not receiving a job retraining. Um, and where does it go? Yeah basically that I'm not getting care but we're digressing and going into areas that we don't need to go into oh but we're not done there I wish we were nope we're not done there and this is also I've been take it's been taking me five years to get my medical records together and I don't even have all of them yet 
And there's a whole bunch of stuff, and I can't show it all to you today. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I found in there when I finally did get a lot of them, including evidence of um, arrhythmias, scoliosis, spondylosis, so basically heart problems and back problems and all sorts of other problems. There is now evidence for that. And that's important with the heart problems because of, let's see if I can find it, this. Convulsions, hypokalemia, urinary tract infection. Well, let's start with the hypokalemia. Hypokalemia means that you do not have enough potassium in your system. And you need sodium and potassium for your cells to work. They are the spark that makes human body runs. Electrolyte is what provides the spark that makes the human body run. That is your battery. So when people start getting hypokalemia and hyponatremia and hypocalcemia, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, basically electrolyte imbalances, not enough sodium, not enough potassium, not enough calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, etc. they can have seizures. But with hypokalemia, they're also known to have things like heart arrhythmias and heart attacks. And on that particular day, on this particular day, my um, potassium was down at 2.7. And I have proof of potassium deficiencies, sodium deficiencies, and calcium deficiencies. All of which can cause seizures. And the spinal stuff can cause involuntary movements. So let's move on. Let's see what have we not looked at yet? We haven't looked at this. So now we're going to find out what happens when I go to an emergency room and nobody's looking out for me. We're going to find out what happens at a lot of emergency rooms when the doctors don't check the. Uh, and a lot of people, doctors just don't have time. You need to realize this right now. This is one of the failings of our medical system. Doctors don't have time to do things like check your chart and look up your diagnosis because they're running around like chickens with their heads cut off. Okay. Now, realize at this point before I read this to you that I have, at this point, years and hundreds of pages of medical documentation. What I just showed you was a drop in the bucket. I have... So many pages. So many years. And then I get people like this, and this is what they do. At the time of discharge, patient refused to leave, was acting as if she couldn't move. I was having trouble moving and coordinating my movement. It's not that I couldn't move. It's that it was hard to move. And um, very hard to move in any coordinated manner. And my legs were not capable of supporting my weight or moving in a coordinated manner. Patient refused to leave, was acting as if she couldn't move. We would give her smelling spells and she would wake up. Yeah, they would. And I really wish I had stayed asleep because at least when I'm passed out, I'm not in horrific pain. Um... She was able to move all four extremities. I did. She would, uh, but not well at this point. She did tolerate a left nasal trumpet and left it there for 20, 30 minutes and fell asleep. You know, see, at that point, I couldn't really move well. Otherwise, I would have taken that thing out. And I didn't fall asleep. I was laying there entirely awake, unable to move with this thing jammed in my nose. And they just came up. I was having no problems breathing. They put in a nasal trumpet in your nose, or they're supposed to, so that they can thread something down your th your nose into your 
mouth so they can help keep your airway open. Um, but they didn't need to do that. I wasn't having trouble breathing. And let me tell you what they were really using it for. They do that to people when they are, when they think they're faking. They just jam. And I didn't gently put it in there. They jammed it as hard as they could into my nose. There was a cracking sound and it punctured the back of my throat. Um, they could have killed me doing that. I mean, that's, they could have killed me by not treating me, but she left. Okay. So she tolerated and left a uh, nasal trumpet and left it there for 20 to 30 minutes and fell asleep. When patient woke up again for discharge, she, she again refused to be discharged. She was acting like she could not speak. I couldn't speak properly at that time. And demanded a sign language interpreter. Yes, I did. She was complaining that she was having tremors. No, I was complaining that I was having seizures. She could not move, but was very eloquently eloquent in her ability to communicate her feelings through sign language with the use of her left hand. I think that the sign language interpreter would disagree with you on that. I was having great difficulty signing with just my left hand and was having to resort to a lot of hand signs and I was unable to remember a lot of my sign language and this is a little girl who grew up with ruptured eardrums and then had her first job working in uh, group homes for people who were developmentally disabled and deaf and or deaf and blind. Yes, yes, my first job, I worked for a branch of the Helen Keller Society. Thank you very much. And this is how you treat me. So, no, I was not eloquent at all. Patient was hearing everything. I was telling the sign language interpreter on the monitor and was getting very frustrated. She was demanding to speak to an ombudsman. She demanded to speak to the police because I was giving her negligent care. When she was getting frustrated, the patient was pounding on her chest forcibly, point her finger at me. It was obviously... Forcibly... Forcibly... Forcefully point her fingers at me and was obviously here, I guess hearing everything else same. She signed out that I was an asshole. Yes, I did because you were. You were an asshole. I informed the patient that she was not having any active seizures, tremors, or any acute neurologic issue, and that I felt she was malingering. She obviously does not have any acute neurologic defect that is preventing her from hearing what I am saying, understanding what I am saying, being able to communicate in sign language, which obviously demands eye and eye coordination, unab unable to see the monitor with a sign language, with a sign language interpreter was at visually see what he was verbally saying and communicating with his hands being able to comprehend and understand what the interpreter was same i guess saying and the respond back to him they're using voice recognition technology i can tell i have the same problem with it he was able to sit up without any issues neurological defects and or weakness and i am not convinced that this patient has any weakness or acute neurological defect Effect, given all of the above patient to be discharged and if she refuses will be escorted off the premises. please note that patient presented the emergency room with the entire face covered with a scarf sometime it's called covid <laughs> she had ink writing on her left arm that said potassium and was acting quite strange this is typical of her prior er visits Where was that page? Oh, there's one. Oh, apparently this neurologist thought there was something up. That neurologist did a test and proved I had seizures. Uh, oh, I have another neurologist over here saying I have seizures. And then this ho-dunk doctor who has obviously not enough training in neurology wants to put in his two thoughts as he is about to throw me into jail. Now, see, this is the thing. I asked the nurse, 
Later, when I was on the phone with them, do you have access to my other medical records through Dignity Health? Yes, they're all in the same, they can all be accessed from any of the hospitals. So apparently he did not check and look, or he would have seen that Mercy San Juan says I have seizures, and that Mercy General, where's Jim Mercy General? Mercy General, over here. Mercy General says I have convulsions, hypokalemia, and neurological disorder. Oh, wait, oh, wait, there's more. Let's pull it all out. Ooh, hold on one second, please, while I get your data. Health. Okay, just oh, wait, that's the wrong thing. So this is from the Mercy General file, and they say right there, I have proximal dyskinesia type one, dyskinesia, 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 and more dyskinesia. Yes, it is a shit show. So you didn't even bother looking it up. And if he had, he would also have found that there's multiple doctors who have said, oh, it's dyskinesia. Oh, it's, it's dystonia. Oh, yes, yeah, she has seizures. We actually took the time to look it up. No, this doctor made an assumption it threw me into jail. Thank you, Dr. Hector Lopez. And I would like to think it would have ended there. It should have ended as soon as there was proof that I had a seizure disorder. It should have ended when a neurologist said, I think she has a movement disorder. Because what this doctor did, what he did, is what a lot of doctors have been doing to me for years, and what doctors continued to do to me afterwards. And they won't even take the time to look at the evidence. It's called malpractice. And so what do they do once they, people realize that I have a malpractice case against people? They start calling me psychotic. That's what they start doing. And if he had asked about my mental health and wanted a real answer, I would have told him, my girlfriend's missing. How the fuck do you think I feel? So you did this to a very ill person who had been having seizures for weeks, who was dealing with the fact that her girlfriend was missing. And about people who had been threatening her girlfriend's life and my life. No, this was nothing new.
Welcome to being gay. Or bisexual. Or actually any minority at this point because this was still Trump era. Even though Trump's not in the house anymore, we are still having to deal with his bullshit. <laughs>